market watchers have their eyes fixed on trading opportunities in fundamentally sound stocks as weak macro environment remains a significant headwind to corporate earnings. And Mukhtar Mohammed, analyst at Asar Investment, joins me now for more market updates. Uh, Mukhtar, thank you for taking the time out to join us today. Well, let's talk about this cherry picking that we're seeing going on at the market. Uh, we know we've seen a raft of earnings come into the market, especially we saw some coming through uh, last week in mixture. Um, looking at Transco Hotel, uh, Total Energies, FCMB. But talk to us about the numbers. How are you, uh, re what is your reading of the numbers and how are you tying that to the cherry picking we're seeing at the market? Well, the numbers are good, um, better than expected if you look at our economic climate. Uh, but we, we, we investors have already priced in the, the, the dividends um, some of these companies are going to pay. And so we are not seeing movement in some of those equity despite their better than expected results. And that has been the trend if you have followed the Nigerian market. Uh, the, the major challenge all investors are looking is towards the first quarter of the year that determine what um, direction those equity or the market will go throughout the year and uh, we've seen those challenges that has to do with shortage of cash for, for, for scarcity cash shortage also so all these are what investors are looking and beginning to wait for the first quarter is of before they begin to take position so that's what but yes, that's what you have actually seen the cherry picking that is happening in the market now. But some investors also are looking at liquidity to be king, cash is king. And that also has been proven to us during this cash shortage. So most investors are beginning to look at that space to see where they can get in um, good um, value in terms of dividend payout and also capital appreciation in the short term. But the challenge with the Nigerian market has always been that um, if investors uh, sometimes want to see those results, uh, because what we've seen play out is that sometimes when this result comes in, it, when you expect the price to go up because there's been pricing, the price begins to come down. So and so most investors are looking, okay, let's see what happens when this result comes in. If it goes down, then we can now buy and we have more in terms of dividend yield comparable to what we have if we have to buy it now. And then it's easier for us to begin to look at capital appreciation also before the half year, especially for companies that are going to pay interim dividends. Mm. We're also seeing some forecasts uh, coming in for the second quarter. Uh, we've seen forecasts from uh, FCMB, we've seen forecasts from uh, Total Energies also. But what do you think about the numbers that these companies, some those who have reported the forecasts, uh, what do you think of those numbers? What does this, what does this say about how they expecting the macro environment to impact or, or business environment to impact on, on their businesses? For, uh, thank God is a um, forecast. So sometimes <laughs> forecast might change, um, but they are basing it on microeconomy um, perception of what they see. If you look at for FCMB, you know that the cashless policy of the federal government has actually been advantageous to financial sector. So definitely um, we expect the numbers to improve comparable to what they are, they, are, they are telling us now. Though there may be little challenge in terms of uh, we don't know the policy direction of the new administration when it comes to power, how this will impact the financial space, especially when we know that uh, it's the, the, the ruling party that are coming back but they also have been uh, one opposition to the, they have been opposed to most of the policy of the current CBN governor. Will we still see him remain there as the CBN government governor? Will that have an impact on the equity market or, or the, on, or, I mean, on the numbers from FCMB? That we'll, we'll wait and see. For total, you know that the income administration has made it also as a policy that um, uh, mainly they come in, they will remove forest subsidy. How will this impact on total? We will we see total still playing that space or they may want to sell up their license and give it to, I mean, sell up the license and give it to another company or they still maintain their marketing M or will they now be thinking of building a refinery also? These are things that we may play out um, before this forecast, before we, we begin to see mm. the earnings and to see whether this forecast is 
meeting what the end what the actual i mean the earnings are meeting what they actually forecasted and you made some very good points there especially the point around the policy direction of the incoming uh president elect and of course how that uh, aligns with you know the expectations of the you know, business environment of some of these businesses uh, who have put out forecasts uh, but let's talk about uh, your we'll keep our fingers crossed on that let's talk about your top stocks uh, at the moment what stocks are on your radar uh, why do you like these stocks? Well, the top stocks still remain the top stocks that are going to pay dividends. For me, is is the cash is king, especially in an economy um, that is going through a lot of microeconomic challenges. In an economy that there will be opportunities, so it's he that has cash that will always be able to take uh, advantage of these uh, opportunities. So I still go to the dividend paying stocks like Zenith Bank, like. Um, uh, um, GTCO and also Access Bank and UBA. And not forget that um, NASCOM also have um, released this result. They'll be paying one night after entering dividend of four, of, of, of um, price that you are getting a dividend yield of almost 10 point something percent. These are things that you might not get in the fixed income space. So um, for that, I also see NICOM into that uh, space to see um, as part of my peak for the week. And um, for me, I think um, those are my picks for this week. Right. Uh, well, that let's talk to us also about your forecast for trading for the rest of the week. We're going to see, obviously, uh, the cherry picking continuing. But is there any uh, any other further or additional market catalysts that you think investors will be keeping their eye on? Are they thinking about uh, trading at the fixed income market, looking at yields and how that impacts or could be impacting uh, their appetite for stocks? I think the appetite for stocks will not be so much, uh, like I said, most investors, uh, especially the, the, uh, the um, what we thought institutional investors are not really there. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have are the retail investors. And so most of those retail investors will be um, waiting for those dividends to come in. Then from there, they also sometimes, they will now move those dividends to the fixed income uh, market, also to maximize profit and also to minimize risks. So with that, you continue to see the cherry picking, like you said, but then it will be favorable to to pick those stocks that you know they are going to pay dividend, but their price are uh, coming down or at, at, at cutting to an equilibrium level. So definitely we expect the market to be to play up and down, uh, especially when investors are still not so much happy um, with the outcome of so they are also being careful, especially not just those that were waiting to drive the market, the foreign investors, even if some of them have decided to use their trap form to begin right. to play the market, but some of them are still not so uh, uh, optimistic about the market going right, forward. Mokta, we're going to have to leave it there. The Thank you so much for talking to us. We appreciate your insight on the market. Uh, Mukta Mohammed, analyst at Asar Investments, taking us through trading this week at the equities market.